Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And here I have an article for you guys straight from Verizon. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys can check it out. So in this evening's video, I wanted to talk about Verizon and small cells. So this is going to be a longer video. Make sure you grab your, your, your popcorn, snacks, blanket, whatever you need. Make sure you grab it because this is going to be a longer video. The wireless future is here with small cells. So I wanted to discuss that. So earlier in the day, if you guys saw that video, I posted a chart of Verizon's total macro count, which was at which is now per estimates at 72,000. And it's, you know, significantly less than what what T-Mobile has deployed in the network today. But in that video, I discussed that in the urban core, Verizon struck a great balance with small cells and macros. And the future of the wireless networking is going to evolve around small cells. So as we progress into the next generation of wireless, 6G, 7G, 8G, the frequencies that are going to be used are going to be higher frequencies than what we're using in the networks today. That's what's rumored. Of course, there's no standard, right? The, the 3GPP has not yet set a standard but I'm hearing terahertz, there's 12 gigahertz. They're, 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 they're going to be higher frequencies in the future of wireless networking. Now, how, how do you make that work? It has to go through small cells. Small cells are going to be very important for the future of networking, and Verizon leads in that department by a landslide. AT&T, they're, they're getting on board with that, so they're deploying more of that. And then T-Mobile is kind of in last place when it comes to, uh, you know, small cells. Now, let me explain just a, a, a brief bit about the T-Mobile situation. So T-Mobile built 25 to 27,000 small cells during LTE, but they, they were very picky as to where they deployed them. It was in very specific areas like my market, LA, Chicago, they, they, they sprinkled them all over, but it was the type of small cells that they were using, which has me a bit concerned, right? They were using strand mounts, mostly strand mounts from what I've seen, a lot of them. Now, that's good and all, right? But they are not as effective as the actual CRAN. And I've asked several different engineers from both, you know, from Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, and yes, Verizon and AT&T, they use uh, strand mounts as well, but not nearly as much as T-Mobile. For an example, here in my market, there's about 150 small cells, you know, about 140 of them are strand mounts. So, yes, those strand mounts will be upgraded to N41, but CRAN is the way to go. And that's, that's what AT&T is building, and that's what mostly all that Verizon's building. Like every single small cell in my market is a CRAN for Verizon. So that's the future of networking. I think eventually the next 50,000 small cells that T-Mobile deploys in total, they, they will get on board with that. At least I, ho I, would, I would hope so. If I, st if I start seeing them deploy even more str strand mounts, then I'm going to question that deployment as well. But for now, Verizon way ahead of the curve on the small cells. They just keep deepening that footprint. A lot of it, you know, about 30,000 uh, small cells are sitting on millimeter wave. That's that's as high as frequency as you can get nowadays. And they're building more. They're constructing more. So they're they're very complementary to the to the macro grid, to that network. You know, totally two different networks. I'm told there's a specific RAN team just for CRAN. You know, they have to they have to monitor them. They have to optimize all that good stuff, you know, to to so it all can be fluent. Right. The handoffs can be great from macro to small cell and vice versa. And it's good to have. It's great. up. Uh, it's great offloading and. Yes, if you're in a in a major metro area, 
like a downtown Manhattan in, in New York City, you can build great density around the macro grid. And T-Mobile has displayed that. They are far denser with towers versus Verizon, but Verizon is using the small cells. So is T-Mobile really denser? I mean, that's, that's, that's up to your discretion, whatever you like more, right? But there, there's going to be some cities that don't have that type of infrastructure where you, you're going to be in neighborhoods on some streets, on some corners, on some blocks where you just can't deploy a macro. You just can't do it. But you can deploy small cells. And that's where the future of wireless is heading. As the frequencies get higher, you are going to need, you know, in some cases, a mac. I mean, a, a small cell like every 2,000 feet, depending, right? And Verizon's already there now, and they're get, and they're deepening that footprint. So now, as we get to the higher frequencies, they have to just upgrade the existing small cells. So for the future of wireless, I think Verizon is laying a much more advanced footprint today than we can even see in the network. Of course, everything right now is centered around C-band, CBRS, but all of that infrastructure that's being built with small cells, they're building that with future technologies in mind, future higher frequencies. And we already see the, the millimeter wave is a much higher frequency that requires a much denser footprint to, to be able to connect to it. And, and, and in some parts of some of the downtown areas, like the Vegas Strip, it's, it's getting to become a contiguous connection to where you can walk, you know, a mile, mile and a half, and there's enough small cells with millimeter wave to where you're just connected to millimeter wave. Of course, there's a lot more of that needed. And I think throughout the rest of this decade and into the next decade, We'll see even more small sales from Verizon. But also, it, you know, while we discuss this, you also have to look at the return on investment. You know, when when is it going to become too expensive for the carriers to deploy this type of model, this type of density, and not charge the consumer more for it? So in the future, you know, we could be paying a lot for wireless to take advantage of these high-end connections. If you look at AT&T for an example, they recently uh, raised their fiber pricing. And I, I think I saw five gigs of speed now is $250. So again, I'm hoping for great competition so the pricing doesn't get out of control. But eventually, you know, as AT&T gets on board with the CRAN, they start densifying even more. You know, if T-Mobile starts moving to a C-RAN uh, structure, they already have a dense macro grid. Now they, they pile on that with small cells. It's going to get very expensive for the carriers to deploy, especially T-Mobile since they don't own any of their own fiber. To deploy that type of model, I mean, they have to, they have to knock on some doors of some third-party fiber providers that will have to lease it back to them, and they will have to ask them to deploy it. You know, if, they, if they're putting small cells in an area where that fiber provider does not have any fiber, you know, they're going to have to trench fiber for that specific area. And T-Mobile is going to have to carry that cost. So it's all going to be very expensive. Um, but I think this is uh, the future of wireless being at its small cells. This will help fixed wireless access grow even more. A lot of offloading and it's going to, it's going to help the mobile user. And I think it's going to help provide great, performance and experience for the fixed wireless access customer as Verizon continues growing that beyond 2025. You know, they have a they have a guidance to go the four to five million by 2025, but they're not going to stop there. They're going to keep going because they spent actual capital towards the millimeter wave, right? The millimeter wave in the neighborhoods, you, you got to say that, that that's for monetizing fixed wireless access. Because if you're too far from that node, as a mobile user, you're not going to connect to it ever. Unless you're literally living in that neighborhood. So you look at the houses. You give them the point-to-point uh, -point 
CPE unit, the router, have them put it on the window, whatever the case may be, and then they can pull millimeter wave speeds. You know, I know now there's apparently a cap, but I, I would rather still be on millimeter wave because it's more bandwidth and it's more congestion proof. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. I look forward to reading your guys' comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.